Greetings! So I'm going to take you through a very quick uh, little demonstration of how to do a blinky on a PIC-16 and uh, I've uh, put together a little uh, schematic here and uh, I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about that schematic. So um, on this schematic we have a, a PIC which is going to be doing our blinky and uh, you'll see here there's an LED and uh, there's a <coughs> resistor in here. The reason for the resistor is to limit the current going through the LED if you just put uh, voltage straight across the LED um, it won't limit the current so that's the reason why we, we have that and that's connected to a, a GPIO, a general purpose IO pin on the uh, the PIC and this PIC is a, a PIC 16F18313 bit of a mouthful and it's an 8 pin device and um, as you can see here oops. So uh, that's our little device there, it's a little 8-pin device. And um, as well as the, uh, the general purpose I.O. that we're going to use to blink the LED on and off with, um, there's also a few other pins that we need to connect in order to be able to uh, supply power and also program the chip itself. So I'll uh, just go through those. Uh, we've got VDD, that's the plus uh, rail. So you'll see up here I've got VDD, otherwise known as plus 5 volts. Hopefully you can see that. Um, on this particular pick it'll run from about 2.5 volts up to 5 volts. So we're going to use 5 volts for this. And um, <clears throat> you could run it off 2.5 if you wanted to for this demonstration, but uh, we're going to be running it at 5. And there's VSS, that's um, otherwise known as ground. And um, You'll see there's also a capacitor uh, which we've strung directly across these pins. That's a bit of good practice. That's a decoupling capacitor, and uh, it's generally good practice to pop one of those on uh, every device that you have on each uh, power rail. So there's two more pins here that we're using, and this is uh, for programming, and that together with the MCLR bar, that means it's an active low master clear. This is actually the reset pin on a pick and it's active low. So that together with these two pins we can use to program the pick. And one other little thing uh, that we need to have is the master reset. It's pretty good practice with picks just to have a 10k resistor from the master clear up to uh, VDD or plus 5 volts or whatever voltage it is you're running at. And there it is up here. Got a 10k, and you'll see here. There's um, this is represents a pin header, so we're going to be popping that in. And the reason for that is that's for our programmer, so we're going to be using this pick kit three. But as you can see, this pick kit three has got uh, a socket on it rather than a plug, and the board is um, a socket it's rather than a plug. So what the header will do when we pop it in there, might as well stick it in now. There you go, and then we can just simply pop that on there and program. And one other thing we're going to do is I'm also going to use the programmer to actually uh, power the device just for now. Um, don't have to do that but uh, that's exactly how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to set to and build this now and um, hopefully uh, I'm going to get it done in the uh, two minutes or so. And um, so first things first, pop the pick in. Uh, then I like to, um, if I possibly can, uh, put the power in. Now quite often like to use these down here. Uh, this is just is like a, a bus bar for the for the main power, and um, we also need a ground VSS going to pin three of this header. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six on there. So there we go. That's pin three, and we want that going to ground as well. And uh, I might as well shove this decoupling capacitor in for now. There we go, that's our decoupling capacitor and as you see, I've good practice to put your decoupling capacitor uh, very close to the uh, chip if you can. Um, normally I'll, I wouldn't have the leads this long but uh, that happened to be what came out of the bag tonight. And um, I'll pop the positive uh, rails on, the VDD rail connections. So that's from there, there you go. VDD on the chip itself and we'll put that into the red rail here and there's also we're going to need a VDD connection that's on pin 2 here and we'll stick that 
there we go onto the red rail here that's that I need an LED as well now as I mentioned the LED doesn't go straight into the pick so I'm going to just uh, offset it from that uh, bottom right pin there and there's our 470 ohm resistor pop that in there we go like so 10k resistor that goes between um, the M clear and the VDD and I could shove it up here um, by the um, header uh, but I think what I'm going to do is to make it a little bit more visible is I'm going to stick it down here so I'm actually going to go between VDD here and M clear here same thing they're all going to be wired up together so no big deal and I've got the white uh, leads here which are going to be for wiring up the uh, in circuit programming thing, so that's our M clear goes up to pin one and uh, the ICS DAT that goes to pin four. There we go. Um, by the way, quick little note there: um, if uh, if you go through your entire life on microcontrollers and don't mess up the uh, the debug connections at least uh, a dozen times in your life, then uh, you're a better person than I am. There we go. That's it done. Uh, maybe I should have uh, actually um, timed that. So next thing we're going to do is I'm going to write a little bit of code and see if we can get this thing to fly. So I'm going to stick this uh, up here and see if we can zoom in. I really hope this is going to work out because um, I have a nasty suspicion it won't but uh, bear with me. It's either that or I have to set up the uh, capture card but I'm just going to show you how quickly we can do this. So, let's get rid of this um, PDF. You see I've got MPLAB X loaded here. So first things first, I'm going to do a new project. And it's going to be a standalone, so it's my ship embedded, standalone project, next. And put in the PIC number here, PIC 16F18313. There it is. And next. And uh, we're actually going to use the uh, PIC kit 3. Select that. And I'm going to use this compiler here, which is XC8 compiler. And I'm going to have to give it a name. Um, now, I'm going to call it... You can call it whatever you like. I just happen to have a, a directory which I, I put all of my uh, uh, various uh, projects in. Um, and I'm going to call this one 16F18313003. Um, if um, that's the directory it's going to go in, if nothing other than just because uh, that's the third project that I've done with this particular chip. And I'm also going to put that in as a project name. Again, there's other ways you can do this, but this is the way I do it. Um, and uh, as always, you ask uh, three different engineers how they're going to do something, and you'll probably get 25 different answers. Okay, so that's created our uh, project, and now I need to go into the source files, and we need to add a little uh, a main program, which is a single file which is going to have our source code in it. So we can go, um, so I'll do that again, right click source files, new, and you can select main.c. The only frustration is, is it calls it new main.c. Now I want to call it main.c, so I'm just going to overwrite that. And uh, again, it's just my uh, sort of personal choice is to do that. And you'll see that it actually um, populates a little bit. I must admit, can't see the point of having this uh, commentary at the top. Um, so, first things first, it includes something called xc.h. Uh, I'm assuming that you've got a, a basic understanding of C. That essentially has all of the um, header file information for the PIC. And I actually prefer to uh, have my braces like this. This is just how it came out. So first things first, we have to tell the um, PIC, uh, as soon as it goes into main, we need to be able to tell it that uh, that RA2 pin that I mentioned earlier on is an output. So we have um, a register called the TRIZ register. So I have to set the TRIZ A register because um, when you go to bigger chips, they have more than just port A and they have port B and C and so on. So this is um, a small chip and it only has um, uh, A, I believe, um, for the uh, GPIOs. Um, it's only, uh, <coughs> only got eight pins. And um, then there's a, a predefined uh, 
bit field structure, so it's called Tris A bits, and then you know, dot, and then you'll see it auto uh, shows you a whole bunch of your possible assignments here. Tris A2. Now, if I set that direction uh, a bit on the, that register to a zero, that means it's an output. So I guess the way to remember that is um, zero O output. Um, if that makes any sense. And the next thing we're going to do is a little while loop so that what we can do is um, it goes on ad infinitum and um, we're going to uh, insert into there, we're going to tell it that we want to put the LED on so I can do lat A so that's the, uh, the latch for the um, port A and again it's got uh, a bit field structure defined and lat A2 as you might expect equals 1, so that turns the LED on and then I'm just going to copy and paste that line and I'm going to turn it off again excellent, so that's great uh, but uh, that's going to turn on and off very very quickly because the clock on this uh, by default out of the box is at, uh, about 16 uh, megahertz so I need to put in a delay, so I'm going to put in a uh, use um, again something that was included in xc.h is there's a uh, delay routine called uh, del underscore underscore delay underscore ms and then you can see how many milliseconds you want so let's do 500 milliseconds put it on yeah, copy and paste that pop it down here and 500 milliseconds off so we're going to put the LED on we're going to delay 500 milliseconds and we're going to put the LED off delay 500 milliseconds and it's in an infinite loop here a couple of other things I just need to mention to you first thing is is that um, it's not that smart, it doesn't actually know in the code how quick the clock is at the moment. Now out of the box this particular chip has a uh, 16 megahertz uh, clock so I have to set a um, hash define oops, I'm on a Mac keyboard here so uh, and it's underscore xdal underscore freq even though we haven't have a crystal we're actually using the internal um, chips oscillator and it's going to be at 16, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 16 million, so that's 16 megahertz. And uh, there's a, a macro within xc.h uh, which uses xdorfrec and the delay ms in order to be able to figure out how long to delay. And there's one other thing um, that we need to add into here and that's that by default this chip has a watchdog timer um, which will reset it after a after a little while. So we don't really want to have that excitement going on so that I'm going to switch it off. So uh, this is going to set up one of the uh, configuration bits on the chip. So within the chip itself there are a bunch of configuration bits but this one is one that you're going to want to uh, probably uh, switch off right to begin with and that's with a hash pragma config and it's a watchdog timer enable and you set it to be off. Brilliant! So that's our code, and uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to compile it and make sure that I haven't got any um, silly errors on here. So I, um, oops, all right, yeah, do a clean and build, make sure there's no errors. Build successful, very nice, I like that. So let's zoom out, and I'm going to plug in uh, the pit kit. Swing around a little bit. So, first things first, I used quite a short lead on here, so if I. There we go. And we plug it in, making sure that pin 1, which is marked here, is uh, pin 1, which is on the top here. And again, like I mentioned earlier on, um, it all, almost everybody. Um, gets it wrong at some point or another. I'm just going to show you also a little trick in a moment which uh, saves you having to um, uh, try to angle that up at uh, a, a weird angle. And uh, I want you to watch the LED here, hopefully it'll come out, but um, let's uh, debug... Oh, one further thing. What I haven't done is I haven't told the PIT kit 3 to power the project, so we could have used external power, but by default it won't. So if you um, select the project uh, down here um, and, uh, oops, sorry, set the project up here, in fact. Right click and do properties, and you set pick kit 3, and up here you select 
power and we click the power is enabled and the voltage level 5 volts that's good as I say this will actually work uh, anything from 2.5 to 5 volts and we apply that now okay and I'm going to do debug debug main project and let it do its stuff launching little warning that comes up here um, some devices are not five, won't work on 5 volts, so uh, it uh, quite often puts up this message. Um, it's up to you whether or not you want to ever clear that, otherwise it comes up every single time you program the device. Sitting there, it's found the device, it's programming, running. And I don't know if you can, hopefully you can see that. I'm going to zoom in just in case you can't. There you go, you've got a flashing LED. Oh, one final snippet. Um, yeah, I actually prefer this. This is like a right angled header that I built myself on a little bit of board, and uh, uh, I prefer using the right angled header to um, to using the um, the straight up one that we used before. Um, it's just easier to have on the desk and uh, doesn't sort of flap about too much. Um, doesn't take more than about five minutes to build one of those up if you're okay with a soldering iron. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye now.